All right, good afternoon to you. It is that time of the afternoon, time for your tropical update. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade, and we have a few systems to discuss. It looks like the threat for Houston and the rest of Southeast Texas fairly low from a direct impact from one of these tropical systems over the next few days. But of course, in the long term, we will have to watch it closely to kind of see where things kind of fall and how things pan out and turn out because we do have a few systems that could develop into tropical depressions or tropical storms over the next seven days. So let's get right to it. First of all, let's talk about where we've been so far this hurricane season. We've made it through almost one month of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. And of course, we've already dealt with one tropical storm. The name, of course, was Alberto. And if you were around Surfside Beach, Galveston for parts of last week, you definitely felt those impacts. We had a lot of rainfall, four, five, six inches of rain for some of those spots. And we also had the high tides, that tidal flooding, coastal flooding, coastal flood warnings were in place. There were several streets, especially some low lying areas that were inundated with water. And this was from a tropical storm that was about 500 miles to our south and made landfall in eastern Mexico. So imagine how much worse things would have been if we had a direct impact from that. Fortunately, that didn't happen, but it is still just the first month of hurricane season, and we've got several months to go all the way through the end of November. We've also got several more names that we could potentially be using as we go through this hurricane season. We've already used Alberto. The next name on the list would be Beryl, then Chris, then Debbie, then all the way down to William if we get that far. Hopefully we won't, but of course, all of the major forecasts that have come out for this hurricane season have called for above average storms, including above average hurricanes and even major hurricanes. Of course, that CSU, Colorado State University forecast that came out in June called for 23 named storms this season, 11 hurricanes, and of those, five becoming major hurricanes. Of course, the NOAA forecast gives a range and NOAA calling for 17 to 25 named storms, eight to 13 of those becoming hurricanes and four to seven becoming major hurricanes. Of course, both of these forecasts are above the average number of named storms, which is 14, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So we certainly have to watch things closely because it could be a very busy season. One reason we think it's going to be a super busy season, well, we've got very warm water temps out there, not quite as toasty as they were in the last few weeks, but still water temps for much of the Gulf of Mexico in the low to middle 80s. So that acts as fuel for these storms that try to develop out there in that water and kind of helps them to Hang on, stay together and get stronger. Also water pretty warm in the Northwestern Caribbean Sea as well, low to middle 80s there and fairly warm water temps for much of the Atlantic. So we are certainly going to have to monitor things closely. Now here's a bit of good news. This time of the year, we track that Saharan dust and the possibility of that impacting these tropical systems. And we have had an increase in the Saharan dust coming off of the African coast, pushing across the Atlantic and even getting into parts of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Still not a ton for the Gulf of Mexico, but this Saharan dust usually acts to limit tropical development. So if we can get more of that dust kicked our way, we will have a lower chance for tropical systems developing, but at this point there is still a shot. It would help to limit development, but it doesn't erase it completely. Speaking of development, we've got not one, but two systems that we are monitoring. The first, a tropical wave way out in the eastern Atlantic. It's got several days to travel across the Atlantic Ocean before it would even become a potential threat for us. We do have to get it through the Atlantic Ocean, through the Caribbean Sea, and then into the Gulf of Mexico. So hopefully that won't happen. But right now, fairly disorganized area of showers and storms in the Eastern Atlantic, just a tropical wave that we are monitoring at this point. So we are going to continue with the potential for a tropical wave developing. 
into maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm. As far as the development chance at this point, over the next couple of days, that chance is very low, only around a 10% chance. But as we look out to the next seven days, this tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic has a medium 40% chance to develop maybe into a tropical depression, maybe tropical storm barrel as it gets closer to the eastern Caribbean. So I think atmospheric conditions will become more favorable for that happening as we get towards day five, day six, day seven. So as we get into next week, certainly keep checking in because we could have another tropical depression or tropical storm getting close to the eastern Caribbean. So that is our tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic. We've got another system though that we've been monitoring the last few days. This is Invest 94L and this is now pushed into the central Caribbean. This one looked fairly impressive as it blew up in the eastern Caribbean. Then it kind of ran into some unfavorable atmospheric conditions. So it kind of fell apart. Still fairly disorganized right now. It's where you see the yellow X to the south and west of the Dominican Republic. But as it pushes into the northwestern Caribbean over the next few days, this is the region where we could have some potential development. There's still a low chance we could have maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm. So that chance is low, but it is still a possibility. If that were to happen, it would likely be anywhere from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, maybe even Monday, and it would be near the Yucatan Peninsula and then eventually into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So late this weekend, early next week, we could have a tropical storm, a tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll have to wait and see, but for now, that area is yellow. That means there is only a low chance of this happening, less than 40%. So we'll monitor it, but even if we get a tropical depression or tropical storm in the Gulf, chances are it would likely roll into East Eastern Mexico, similar to Tropical Storm Alberto, and we may get some slightly higher rain chances from it early next week, but that would be about it. So I'm not expecting any major issues from Invest 94L. Our Tropics future cast will show what we're expecting Invest 94L to do. It is going to continue pushing west northwest, and likely by Saturday, here it is south and west of Cozumel, right over the Yucatan Peninsula, likely pushing into the southwestern Gulf late Saturday into Sunday, maybe getting enough strength to turn into a tropical depression or a tropical storm. Still, though, looking fairly disorganized. However, this one is a little more interesting. This is the tropical wave currently in the eastern Atlantic. This is Monday around noon, right on July 1st, and our models are showing this spinning up and looking fairly impressive. So by Monday, we could have that tropical wave in the eastern Atlantic, possibly turning into a tropical depression or maybe even a tropical storm. You can clearly see see that counterclockwise swirl in between Barbados and Trinidad and Tobago. So we'll have to watch that closely. By that time, it would be entering into the Eastern Caribbean, and then we'd have to see where it would be heading after that. So we've got to keep a close eye on both of those systems. However, development for this one, a medium shot, development for Invest 94L, a low shot. So that will do it for the two systems that we have. We do still, though, have a long ways to go. This is just the beginning of hurricane season. We're still technically in the first month. We've still got all of July to get through. Things usually really start to ramp up and get busier during August. September being the peak month usually of hurricane season, especially right around September 10th. Even into October, we could still have quite a bit of action. Then as we go into November, things usually start to calm down, but we can always even have late, se late season systems and late season storms. So you certainly need to keep checking back, keep it here to try to stay safe from everything going on.